again. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to apologize in advance for a bad allergy day. I don't know if everyone else is suffering as I am, but um, they cut down two huge ailanthus trees behind my house. It, it's good news, but ooh, there's a lot of pollen coming down from those uh, trees in my backyard. And I think that's why I'm struggling um to speak this morning so forgive me if i have to keep clearing my throat today uh, my name is liz and i am happy to welcome everyone here and at home to art with liz i want to start by thanking the hoboken public library for allowing us to have these wonderful hybrid classes uh during this time of the covid pandemic we are still I guess officially the pandemic is over, but uh, the library is still keeping these creative times open for all of us, those of us from afar and those of us in person. And we are in August and I have created a theme for the Art with Liz classes of looking at artists who have been inspired by nature and the joy of being in the out of doors. Because here on the eastern, eastern seaboard of the United States, this is the time of vacation when children are off from school, people are done with college for a short while, and Many families take vacations and spend a lot of time outdoors. Today, we're going to continue with that theme by looking at an artist who went by a made up name of Hunter Vostor. He was born, and forgive me, my German pronunciation is not very good. Anyone here can correct me at any time, but he was born with the name Friedensreich Stovaster. Am I close? <laughs> he was born in Vienna, Austria on the 15th of December, 1928. And we are going to start this class by viewing a slideshow of his work. We're going to talk about and discuss his work, and then I'm going to invite you to do your own art project inspired by what we look at. And here we go. We're going to jump right in. Huh. Hold on to that thought. All of a sudden, the slideshow is not available. it is. Now we can do it. Yes. I forget how to get rid of this one. I'd floating meeting. So. All right. Hunter Wasser, this is his pseudonym. He created the name by looking at his surname, Sto Wasser. Thank you. S T O, the first three letters of his surname means 100. It's a Slavic name, but in German, 100 is Hund, H-U-N-D. So he created this last name, Hunter, Huntert Wasser, which means basically 100 water. And we'll talk a little bit more about his name later on. He had to change his name and go by the pseudonym because the period of time in which 
he spent his early years was during Nazi Germany, during the time of Nazism in Europe. He was growing up in Vienna, Austria, and he and his mother were Jewish. So it was a very difficult period of time for he and his mother. And he started thinking about what he could do to protect himself and his mother. And changing his name was one of the things that he could do. He also pretended that he was Christian, which was not difficult for him because, morning Daniel, because his father was in fact Catholic. So he was able to pretend that he also was Christian. He also joined the his. Hitler Youth League, so that gave him a lot of additional protection. In his professional life, as he became an adult, he was a visual artist and an architect who worked a lot in the field of environmental protection. He loved nature. And he created buildings that he hoped would leave little impact on the earth. He wanted people to live in buildings that protected the environment, not harmed it. And they were very interesting buildings. They had wavy floors and walls that were not straight. He was way ahead of his time in this kind of architecture. The most famous architect that he can be compared to is the Spanish architect Gaudi. Maybe some of you have seen his buildings or have heard of Gaudi. Gaudi also made very wavy, organic formed buildings. Hunter Wasser was an opponent of the straight line. And you can see that in this, one of his paintings. So he was professionally an architect, but he loved to paint. And as he grew in his profession, he became famous also as a painter. And one of his goals and part of his philosophy was to make humans one with nature. He wanted human beings to become much more empathetic with the natural world. He hoped that we would become nature ourselves, to learn to live empathetically with nature and not harm or destroy it. And so a lot of the images that he painted would be of humans being part of plants, not being separate, but actually part of other living organisms on earth. And you can really see that in this painting, there are faces that are parts of things that look like flowers. There are faces in the sky. And you can definitely see that he's an opponent of the straight line. Am I right? There are very few straight lines in this image. All right, so his work is best known in Vienna where he created a place called the Hunter House. I was hoping that Jane was gonna be here today because she's actually visited. Have you also, Heather? Yeah, I couldn't remember. Anyone else visited the Hunter Wasser House in Vienna? It's supposed to be, it's an extraordinary place, right, Heather? Are Right. So the floors are wavy and it's like you're walking in the ocean, not on the ground. <laughs> he was an amazing person. He developed artistic skills early on. And after the war, he spent three months at the Academy of Fine Arts in Vienna. 
And it was at this time he began to sign his art Hunter Wasser instead of Stowe Wasser. He left to travel and he used a small set of paints that he carried at all times to sketch anything that caught his eye. Kind of like our friend and fellow artist Bill Curran, he was always painting and sketching, preferably out of doors wherever he went. He had his first exhibition in commercial painting in 1952-53 in Vienna. So as I mentioned, he, he adopted this new name based on the translation of Stowe, S-T-O, which was the first three letters of Stowe Wasser, his real name, which is the Slavic word for 100 and Hunt is 100 in German, plus his first name, Frieden, Friedenreich, which has the double meaning, peace realm or peace rich in the sense of peaceful. Therefore, his name, Frieden, Friedenreich Hunterwasser, translates directly into English as peace realm 100 water interesting. So what do you think of this image? Do we like? Okay, can you express why, yes, Steve? What is it about the eyes that you don't like? <laughs> Are they they're too, a little bit too staring, a little bit too intense? Intense, maybe. And Joe said one eye is bigger. Yeah, good that you notice it. Yep. They're a little creepy, the eyes, I think. Look like cat's eyes. They look like cat's eyes. To me, the image is kind of cat-like. It's not human, it's more an animal. And then there's another face in the bottom half. That yellow thing looks like a face to me. Looks like a bird to me. Or a bird. But it is a face, right? Am I right? There are two eyes. Yeah. It's not something you'd want to hang in your dining room. You think it would be troubling while you're trying to eat. Yeah. 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 I, I kind of like the bottom half more than the top. I, I like the tiny squares, the squares within squares. I love how Hunter Wasser repeats the repeating patterns in his work. And this is something I want you to focus on in the next few pictures that we look at and try and replicate in the work that you do today. I find something very soothing in the repetition of the same shapes and same lines. So see what you think in the next few pictures that we look at. I like the way it curves. I like the curves as well. Okay, so cool. What do you think of the colors? And there's a bit of feedback. I don't know why. Anyone not like the colors? They're bright, right? They're very bright and intense. So he, in the 50s, he uh, started doing more architecture. He also became a graphic designer. He created a lot of flags for different things, stamps, coins, posters for various countries, Cap Verde, the United Nations, Geneva, etc. In 1957, he acquired a farm on the edge of Normandy. He went through several marriages, in the 60s and 70s, none of them seemed to stick. 
Uh, in 64, he bought a sawmill in Lower Austria's Waldviertel. I think that's a forest. And he loved it there. It was far from the hustle and bustle of Vienna. He was surrounded by nature and he spent a lot of time there doing his art. In the 60s, he spent time in Uganda, in Central Africa, where he painted a number of works and named them after the kingdoms. In 1972, Hunter Wasser incorporated a stock company and he did extremely well financially. And he used that money in the 70s to acquire several properties in the Bay of Islands in New Zealand. And New Zealand became his second home. And he spent most of his remaining years from then until 2000, when he died, in New Zealand because it became his adopted home, which I find so interesting. And in New Zealand, he designed a house called the Bottle House, where he could live in a largely self sufficient dwelling. This was way ahead of his time. He could live entirely on solar energy, a water wheel, and he created a biological water purification plant. So he did a lot of his own ecological grassroots experiments there in how to live in a green and fully sustainable way. So not only was he an artist and an architect, but he was an environmental scientist. He also in 1979 bought the vast historical garden, the Garden of Eden in Venice, including the Palazzo Villa del Rose in, from Alexandra of Yugoslavia in Venice. I mean, the man was incredible. So this painting's different, but similar. It's way more architecture in this than the previous picture. Interesting composition, I think. Any thoughts before I move on to the next? You're right. There's no figurative stuff in this one. You're right, Pat. The same vivid color, but this one's more about architecture, less about nature in this one. There is what looked like the rays of the sun, right? Coming down and something that looks like it could be the sun itself at the top, but it's definitely his style, the repeating patterns. I'm gonna start going through these quickly. I love the blue outline, right? That kind of turquoise outline. And then there's purple outline in the top half. This is one of his more famous pieces. Unfortunately, I don't have the titles of these. In the 1980s, he became a big supporter of Ralph Nader. That name may be familiar to those of you uh, who are. Americans. Ralph Nader was a big environmentalist. So here you can really see his whole philosophy of life played out. The human is definitely part of nature. And again, the repeating lines over and over again, the person literally flows through nature. This is one. What, Pat? What medium? You know, I'm not sure. I'm guessing probably oils and then later on acrylic, but that's a very good question. It does look like markers. And remember, he was primarily you know, a graphic person, graphic designer, architect. He never really trained as a fine artist. So it could be printer's ink. 
It could be any kind of ink. Good morning, Janice. I'd pull up a chair. We'll, we'll make room for you. It's glorious color in this one, I think. All right, I have a lot of pictures for him. Let's just whiz through. Here's a great quote from him. He was fascinated by spirals and called straight lines godless and immoral. Love that. He seemed to be fascinated by maze-like things too. I like how this, the thing on the right is squishing down on top of the building on the left. I like how he achieved that effect. It's kind of like the right side of the picture is impressing the left side of the picture, squishing it flat, right? It's an interesting composition. This one appears to be upside down, but um, it's not. And you cannot deny the color and the patterning in this one. His images tend to be very flat. There's not a whole lot of shadow or shading in them, although this one has some. And he does love that heavy, dark outline. Look how he uses the black outline in various places in this image. Another spiral. Remember, he loves spirals. Shapes that look like plants. Very few straight lines. This one is characteristic of his work. He's also very famous for what I call lollipop trees. And there, I'm going to start showing you a whole series of these tree paintings now. And his work is what I would call busy, right? So a lot of action, a lot of activity, a lot of things going on, a lot of small details in his work. He called his theory of art trans automatism, focusing on the experience of the viewer rather than the artist. Liz, does it say anything about the size of the paintings? I think they varied. I think there were some very large mural sized pieces and then some very small. And he believed human misery was the result of rational, sterile, monotonous architecture. It's kind of cool. And here's another beautiful quote. If man walks in nature's midst, then he is nature's guest and must learn to behave as a well brought up guest. And talk about busyness. This is another winter cluster. He campaigned for the preservation of the natural habitat and demanded a life in accordance with the laws of nature. He wrote numerous manifestos, lectured and designed posters in favor of nature protection, and was very much against nuclear power. I like this composition very much. I like the red stripes counterbalanced with the red trees on the right. This is one of his quieter pieces. Colors are more muted. Also this one. But again, the repetition of shape. This is something I want you to think about in your work today. How can repetition create pattern and interesting composition in your work? Oops, sorry, I'm getting an incoming call. I'm ignoring it, I hope you can too. 
Um, this is one of his more famous pieces. I'm not sure why. <laughs> In 1993, Hunter Wasser was invited to design an art center. He completed the design, but the project was not completed. The project was finally approved in 2015 and became the Hunter Wasser Art Center, which was open to the public in 2022. This became the last authentic Hunter Wasser building to be completed. And I believe this is the final picture in the slideshow. He died February 19th, 2000, age 71, aboard the Queen Elizabeth II. Yes, he was on his way back to New Zealand. Um, I think he had been on a lecture trip somewhere. All right. So any last minute thoughts or ideas before I stop the share. Is, are you trying to tell us something, Esty? What age did he die? 71. I found myself saying young. This is no young. It's well, it's I'm young not, for I'm some of us. <laughs> um, all right. Our project for today, you have some choices, as always. You could copy a Hintertwasser, or you could create your own imagery thinking of a shape in nature that you love and using it to create a repeated pattern. I want you to do it in color and any media that I have brought in. Or those of you at home, you can use what you have available to you obviously at home. I have brought in oil pastels, acrylic paint, colored pencils, regular number two pencils, and all kinds of black and white drawing equipment as I always do. If you use acrylic paint, I'm asking that you please don't mix the paints in the jars that I brought in. There are paper plates available for you to do your mixing. You can also, this just occurred to me, you could, do a self-portrait of yourself, obviously a self-portrait, it's an image of yourself, in nature of yourself blending somehow with nature. Now, here's a suggestion. My favorite shape in nature is the spiral. I look for the spiral in nature whenever I can. I think it's one of the most beautiful recurring natural shapes there is. And if you look closely at a lot of my own work, you will find spirals in many of the images that I create because I do love it so much. Try and think of a shape that you see in nature all the time. And think of it as something that you could use in a repeating pattern. As always, a suggestion from me is to start lightly in pencil first on white drawing paper, and then go to work in color. All right, any questions? This is a wide open creative project today. Feel free to go crazy with your imagination, or you may copy a Hunter Wasser image. I'm going to put one up on the screen, or you can use your smartphones to find one to copy. Learning from other artists is the best way to improve your own art skills. All right. You can use more than one shape. Absolutely. You can use lines as well as shapes. Hunter Wasser repeated lines over and over again. Absolutely. Great question from Sally. You can use more than one shape. 
Any other questions, thoughts, or ideas? And Hunterwasser used a lot of simple shapes, circles, rectangles, triangles, spirals. I mean, he had a whole arsenal of symbols in his work. I'm gonna put up this image. It is my favorite of his. If there's a huge outcry against it, I will consider changing it. Do I think he's a great artist? Not really, but I sure do love his philosophy. I love the idea of an artist using her or his power to make people aware of the beauty of nature and to help people realize that they can be a force for good in protecting the earth. So, all right, go to work, everybody. Have some fun. Go get your supplies, people here and abroad. <laughs> I know, this is very similar to Indian art. So let's see what you come up with yourself today, Joe. What are you going to make? You could work on, did you bring the elephant painting today? It really fits yeah, with this. Yeah, do that in color. It's perfect for today. This is not one that I want you to think really hard about today. This is one to just try and relax and be good. And if you don't like the image on the screen, try and find another option. I love the photo you put on Start with simple things. 
Folks at home, you have ideas? You're cooking? Hunter Wasser. I always feel like I should stand at attention when I say his name. I wish you were all here so I could see what you were doing. Alice, you're good or you have a question? No, I'm good. I was just, uh, I had to take a phone call. So I was wondering where you are, where you were. <laughs> In, I'm here. Yeah, good. So I'm gonna get started now. Okay. Margo's working. Yeah, I'm looking for stuff. <laughs> looking for stuff. Oh, I love your beautiful blouse, Margo. Thank you. Lauren's here. Hey, Lauren. Where did that go? Let's go. Oh. oh, I forgot to register Helen. Oops. She didn't tell me to register. Laura, I'm going to register someone right now. I'm going to register someone for the class right now. Helen, this Oh, the AC is off. 
There it is. There's a brush on the floor right by your spine. This is a lesson in having a paper on the Find anything on the internet. Yeah. What are the things you could do? Lots of circles. Yeah. 
This really goes with the whole Eastern European thing. Good tomorrow. Folks at home, you're busy working. Good. I'll be back. much about the drawing today. Just lightly sketch down your whole composition and then have fun with the home. And the oil pastels are a good choice. They're very, very bright. You can use the oil pastel and the paint as well. I love this. It's really great. Very nice. Keep going. Right track. You got plenty of time. Well, I shall see you in the morning. You got plenty of If I can find something in the kitchen.
Your yeah. 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 Yes, I don't want to mix this part. Yeah, I remember. Do your larger bits first. Always easier to do big shapes first. Even though in this kind of painting, there probably aren't that many big shapes. But remember to do your large shapes first. Come back to do the details and the outlining at the end. I'm sure that's what Hunter Wasser did. Those of you who are with us yesterday, wasn't it nice to have Bill talk about his work? It's always so great to have the real living artists with you, to hear them. I love when he said, be nice to yourself. Give yourself a break. Do you think he knows to do for himself? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This one story says to you. Well, yes, but all artists are the same. Local artists. Bill Kern was our featured artist at the senior center, yes. Oh, yes. The Hoboken Museum on how to paint outside. Lena Air class. Oh, you know, you can't get the hook you're struggling with it. A razor that's not even in the wrist. Why torture yourself? Now you know if you clean this and paint now, you can paint white. I would I would draw with the oil pastel first, and then you won't have to worry about messing up. But you can paint right over it. If you have to use lots of water, lots of water, you can use a little bit of paint. Okay. You're welcome. So I teach us on that. Yeah, 
She was really happy with the school, but it's first time. Oh, that's a bit of a thing. She was also a commission. She doesn't have just this, whatever you're doing. Am I in so much here? No, 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 Very successful. Yes, it's better. We need more water. Make it thin. Lots of more water. Okay, you know I that Yeah. The man who said straight lines are in war. There is no right or wrong. Remember. Hunter Vossert said, straight lines are immoral. So this is a project you can really let your hair down on. Have some fun today. Don't stress, please. And my favorite saying, if it's perfect, it ain't art. Even think of the, you know, the penultimate great artist, Michelangelo. Michelangelo's David is based on a flaw. The block of marble that he carved the David from has a huge crack in it. And he was forced to carve the David out of proportion. Yes. And that's one, to, one of the reasons why it's such a great work of art, because it's not perfect. Let go of this extraordinary human need for perfection. It cannot be attained. Ever. Let your personal st style shine through. That's what makes your creative work art. Use the big brushes for the big shapes. Love this one. Beautiful colors in this one. Very nice. Great. Very bold. Bone.
That's what art is experimentation. Your nails Wild has cells, so you want to bear down hard with them, you see, in hopes because it gets the richest color. But every once in a while, sit back and relax because that, that kind of pressing hard with the oil has cells can make your arms and shoulders tense up. So every once in a while, give yourself a little break. <laughs> Everybody heard that. Very happy. Folks at home, you're moving along nicely, I'm assuming. No one's asking for help or. Those of you whom I can see, you look deep, deep, deep into your work. 
those of you who are off camera, please remember everyone at home, if you need help, you can call me. You know, just yell, Liz. <laughs> Yes. Do you have an extra piece of paper there? Yes. Yeah, so you could smear it. I wouldn't do it with your fingers. No, I'm not. It's difficult to wash off. Everybody's work today. Awesome. Now, 
19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. We have 26 people total today that's an all-time high yeah. kudos to all the artists hard at work today 26 members of this class bravo proud of everybody art will change the world one artist at a time <laughs> it's a slow roll, Lesty. Sorry. Change is slow, but it happens.
steps. I'm Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm doing my best. There's even finer point questions. Mm -hmm. Find you one? Mm -hmm. My, my, what is, uh, rough, you know, okay. I only write two. That's why, 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 I know, I know what is that. Yeah, that goes very well. Have a lot of time. Let's say I see. Yeah. Now there are How are my homies? My homies are good. Yeah, I'm done. You're finished. I have to go to a recycling thing. So I sent you my work. Already. Okay. Thank you, Alice. And thank you for going to a recycling thing, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah. Well, I cleaned out the garage. So it's a bunch of oh. hazardous waste that has to go. Somewhere. So, anyway, <laughs> thank you for the lesson today. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye, Alice. Good luck. See you next week. <gasps>
Laura. Good morning. I'm sorry, I was having some technical difficulties, but happy art day, everybody. Thanks, Lauren. How's everyone today? Doing good? Doing great. How are you? Good. I'm, I'm moving, so I've been uh, a little Ooh. preoccupied. And are you staying in this area? I am. I'm packing up my, uh, my Maryland abode and uh, heading north for real, so... I'll, uh, I'm so thrilled. Yeah, oh, too. So, some in uh, in class, hopefully, uh, art art hellos. Yes, Lauren's starting next in class with us. Yes. Starting uh, starting next month. So I'm very excited. Very excited. Or I'm sorry, it's still August, uh, October. I'll be back in October. So ah, oh, well, it's too far away, but it's not so far away that we can't survive till you get back. We will well, <laughs> hang in there. I've got hugs saved up for everybody. So <laughs> awesome. Oh, congratulations, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been a long road, but we are thrilled that you're coming back. Oh, well, thank you. I, I likewise, you guys are my heart. So I'll, I'll be excited Woo! to see you. Bravo. And I love today's artist, by the way. I also wanted to say very cool. Good. We have talked about him before, but he bears repeating, I think. Oh, for sure. His spirit's wonderful. It is. I mean, combining the visual with the environmental is always a great thing, I think. Absolutely. Oh, Margo, Margo, you want to share? Wait up. Yeah. I'm going to spotlight you. I'm not done yet, but why not? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it didn't work. Let me try again, Margo. Wait up. I was trying to spotlight Margo because she wants to share her piece. It's actually something that you did in a previous. Oh, it's because I'm sharing. Wait, I have to stop the share for a moment. Okay. Can you see it? Yes. Wait, I'm going to enlarge you. Nice. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. Good morning, Margo. Good morning, sweetheart. <laughs> I love it. And this is watercolor? Beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Margo, as always, I'm going to tell you. The background. Background, background, background. It's really going to make that image stand out. I'm working on it. <laughs> All right. Well done. Beautiful form to those shapes. And great color. Thanks, Margo. You're welcome. It's a little early for sharing, but anyone else at home want to share where they're at with their work? You need any advice? Showing work in progress is always a good thing. You can get helpful suggestions. Not yet. Liz? Yes, Stephanie. Woo! I love it. Wow. Let me spotlight you. Hold on. Oh, wow. Oh, it's really lovely. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Especially Beautiful. like the way you treated the background in this piece. It's, I just love the spirit of it. It's so perfect. It's a work in progress. I'm Beautiful. still outlining. But thank yeah. you. That would be my one tip. I Perhaps a little bit of outline around the tree, not the yeah. outline, but just a touch. In, in well, random, I, I'm random going to continue place. this around here. Beautiful. Just a little more, teeny bit more. Right. Well. Thank you. Great composition. Thank you. Well done, Stephanie. Thank you. Oh, you got a lot of hearts. <laughs> What? Oh, I got a lot of hearts? Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. Lily, you, are you up for sharing? Um, I'm doing a happy project. We like happy. You want to show us? Yes, I guess so. <laughs> you don't sound happy okay so i'm making these happy little squares nice 
Oh. Love the colors. Look at that. Oh, oh beautiful. So pretty. Beautiful. Ooh, I so love I, that. I loved, I loved the talk about the nature and the lines. And I loved that straight lines were bad. So I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to do what I'm doing because there are no rules today. <laughs> exactly what I did. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Good to see you, Lily. Same here, Lily. Did you hear that? There's a lot of screams of we miss you. Yes. All right, keep keep working on that. I want to see. Is it? Are they all going to be joined together, or are they meant to be individual pieces? Oh, you know me and my pin cushions. Aha, they're pin cushions. And and at Liz, as you would say, me more you. Oh, bye, you guys. Right back at you. Keep keep making, keep creating, keep bringing us joy. Absolutely, right back at you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Liz. Bye, Liz. Susan. Oh, right. Oh, look at this, everybody. Wait. Not done. Not done. We can see. Oh, wow. Love the layering of this piece. It's awesome. <laughs> Woo, Susan. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> the important bit. <laughs> and I love the colors. Thank you. Oh, it's beautiful. Bring Aww. it on Tuesday so we can see it in real life, please. I will. I will. Nice. Thanks. Nice job. Thanks. Lauren, do you have something you made that you want to share? Mine's definitely a work in progress, but I'm going to be, I'll, sh I'll be able to share something by the end of class i'm doing like an ocean oh, okay. yeah a tad bit early for sharing um doris wait now i lost doris uh not ready yet okay <laughs> it happens <laughs> it's perfectly all right and you don't have to share it all ever if you don't want to robin Oh, Robin, you're muted. I think. Robin, we're always having audio problems. Breaks my heart. Oh, look at this drawing. Wait, this is at my son's backyard. And oh my God, I'm going to And there's so many busts, hatchings and so many shadows. Uh, from something above that puts all these stripes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint this. Beautiful. It was just beautiful. Yeah. Palm trees and all kinds of foliage. Yes, and that. So that's what I Can't wait to see it in color. Woohoo! Yeah, I, I need to do the color. <laughs> Great foundation with that drawing. Awesome. Okay. All right. I don't think I missed anyone. If I did, give me a yell. Yeah, Lauren Lauren said she's not ready to share. I feel like some people may have left. I don't know. I felt like there were more people at home. Yeah, there were. Um, what? Wow, we've made a lot of progress. What was that? Oh, yes. Teal. Oh, teal. Not the highest quality paper, but we're getting there. Margo, is your kitty on screen today? I, he's behind the screen. You want me to flip my... <laughs> <laughs> he's never far. <laughs> I
I switched it around, but um, let's see. No, this is in the way. <laughs> See him? <laughs> That's one of them. I've got two. <laughs> I don't know where the other one is. <laughs> See him? Layer of oil pastel on your work. When you get home, you can take a butter knife or a fork and scratch the textural things. 
see what she forgot to bring with me. You can use a pencil. The pencil can leave a line. If you want it to be a clear line, use the back You can use also the tip of a paintbrush, the wooden handle tip. Try that. If you don't like how it looks, you can rub it away. Um, folks who are working here, do you want to share or do you want to keep going? It's a quarter to 12. Look at Joe's. Everybody's holding up his work to share. It's pretty fantastic. It's a swimming elephant with diamonds, and he gave it reptilian skin. Love it. Bravo. Like it, Joseph wrote to Sharon. You want to hold your work up too? Everyone's deeply involved, so I guess Sharon is not. Yay! Oh, look how gorgeous! Look at this beautiful saturated color. Bravo! And you're going to take it on, let it dry. You're going to add detail. Yeah, one more. She did too. Wow. So this project, I could see on people's faces when I gave you the idea for this project, a lot of people were looking worried. Like, what am I going to do? Am I right? Yeah, and look sure. what she came up with. All right, a couple minutes and then we must clean up. And folks at home, anyone now want to share who did not get a chance before? No pressure. You can always send me JPEGs, of course. Mine, mine look a little bijou. But I was trying to do two things with pastels and they're not quite blending the way that I want to, but I'm doing like a sunburst. Oh, I like, yes. And the, the idea hold of it still, Lauren, hold this still. Okay. The idea of it is to kind of incorporate some of 
this sort of, oh, this is terrible. I was thinking also the save the whales, but doing water oh, with, with like a sun, I'm sorry? Yay. It's, it's in the early stages, but I, uh, I promise to send you a JPEG of the finish because I, okay, I, I might change the medium um, to, to markers. So, but that's what I'm working on. I look forward to seeing it evolve. Markers, Thanks. markers might be better for Hunter. The soft pastels are difficult with this kind of repeating pattern thing. It is. It's. I'm not, yeah, I'm not getting, I want it to kind of bleed into each other. I'd like it to kind of be a, a space to an outer space behind this beautiful sunburst and then that kind of reflecting into the water. So, um, so I would recommend for that either markers or paint. Okay. Do you think watercolor? Watercolor would work, but more towards the opaque, less transparent, but more opaque. Okay. Okay, great. Can I will send to that it. when I finish. So good to see you. Ah, good to see you. Good to see everybody. Uh, All right. I kind of finished. Oh, and Stephanie's made more progress. So thanks, Lauren. Let's go back to Stephanie's. Yeah. I love wow. this. It's really charming. It's beautiful. I love I love, I love the sunsets and the sky behind the, the tree. It really makes it pop. So I beautiful. agree. Love that piece. Oh, thank you. Did you see? I copied one of his. Yes. Yep. Okay. Right. <laughs> I just think they look like smiley faces. <laughs> <laughs> they do. How do I fix that? Or do you like it that way? I think you should leave it. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's cute. That's what makes it charming. Thanks. Part of part of its charm. Is that watercolor? Yeah, watercolor and marker. Beautiful. Yeah, I love the way it bleeds together, but not too much. I'm debating on whether to use for a mine. Well, I'm still a beginner in watercolor. Oh, you never I'm, know it, particularly with the background. The background is beautifully done. Really, really nicely done. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I love your comments. It's really encouraging. Good. That's that's our job. All right, Darcy. You never had a chance to share. Would you like to now? <laughs> I can show it incompleted. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Look at the color wow. in this one. Beautiful. Love oh, it. the background is beautiful. I'm using the oil pastels, and I've got to do some more blending and adding some more color. And that's labor intensive blending with oil pastels like that. That's hard work. Yeah. Yeah. Requires a lot of elbow grease. Beautiful. Do you have any tips on blending it, or is it literally just fingers and elbow grease, as you said? You have to press really hard, right, Doris? You have to. Yeah, and I've been using a paper towel also. Oh, excellent. Okay. It looks great. It's really nice. Mm. Really captured the spirit. Yeah. Thanks. All right, folks here, Dan, do you want to share? Come on up, Daniel. Yeah, come on up, Bestie. You, you just held it up. But Daniel's coming up to the camera so folks at home can see too. Oh, wait. We got a spotlight me. Where am I? Dan, can you back up just for a second so I can get... <clears throat> there we go, Dan. Good oh, job. That's oh, great. Wow. Oh, nice. That's great. Love and you the eyes. The color in this part, Dan? No, it's white. You're going to leave it white. It's powerful, right? Very. Yep. Very strong. 
And are you feeling less tense? A little bit. I'm still, uh, is it okay if I leave a little bit? Please, yeah. You may go whenever you yeah. feel a need. See you next week, I hope, Dan. All right. Here's the best. Oh, wow. okay. I like the, I like the flowers. Hey, next is Esty. Everybody check it out. Wow. Wow. Beautiful. Fabulous. She says she likes the next one better, so show the one you like. <laughs> Oh, oh wow. Oh, awesome. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And she's using the crayon resist technique. She drew first an oil pastel and then painted right on top of it. Oh, cool. Lovely. Very Great way strong. to get a background. They love the background, Esty. I don't know if you heard. You're the background. Here comes Janice. Look at this. Everybody. Wow. A little bit higher, Janice. It's Janice, beautiful. it's beautiful, right. gorgeous. It grow wild in Burgundy in springtime. And this looks like a Monet. Oh, it's gorgeous. gorgeous painting. I'm just having fun, thank you. I think the line is forming here. Okay. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Sun oh, my Sun Absolutely oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oil pastel piece. Oh, color is gorgeous. I'm the whole thing. I'm not sure why. Sure this yeah. way, yeah. So Beautiful. Just fantastic colors. Gorgeous. Just oil pastel. And now Ye Yeka. This is her work. Woo! I love this one. Talk oh, about blending. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. Love the movement in the background, you know, in the, in the background, in the foreground. <laughs> that's Beautiful. a really was such a great inspiration. Well done, Yeah. <laughs> And here's Judy's, also a crayon resist piece. Mm, beautiful. Lovely. Judy, awesome. Wow. This one looks like the Egyptian one. An Egyptian yeah. because of the dark outline around the eyes. Wow. Yeah. Judy, really good. <laughs> Judy, lots of really good, beautiful. You gonna show yours? Uh, and sure. here's Pat's. <laughs> oh, it's a uh, wow! This way? Oh, no, Pat's really gonna turn wow. in the right direction. Uh huh. Beautiful. Pat, beautiful. Great. Gorgeous. Great. Wow. Love the frame. Oh, it's just a mon morning glory. I walked by this morning, so oh. I, sure. I love the frame. That's great. Yeah, I do too. The frame's great. What oh, medium uh, did you use? Uh, it is a very close-up version of Morning Glories. <laughs> and now I leave. I'm not finished. <laughs> this is a work in progress. How cool is awesome. it? Oh, I love oh, it. Didn't she do great? She's mixing colors. It's great. Really <laughs> proud of this piece. Awesome. Well done. All right, and Joe. Folks at home, you didn't get to see Joe's yet. Wow. Oh, wow. Loves Beautiful. Detail, Joe. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, I love the texture. Uh -huh. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. There Great you go, texture. Joe. Perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. So it's a swimming elephant with gemstones. And How did you create the texture? It's beautiful. How did you create the texture? So I, I, I draw the elephant first and fishes and the diamond. And I put the light, light colors, very light watercolor. Wow. Acrylic, very light color. It's amazing. I love beautiful. it. Beautiful. The main thing is artwork, you know. It's beautiful, so Joe. Thank you. It, uh, it's like this. Mm. Yeah. But 
Now comes Sally. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. This is Sally number one. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. wow. Just really beautiful color, Sally. Oh, owning it. <laughs> just to keep trying. And you beautiful. just keep drumming, Sally, because you keep trying. Oh. Beautiful. Great, Sally. Really. Be proud, kid. I think the white, two or three colors, white, green. Tell the folks here, not no, me. No, 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 no. So Sally said she just tried two or three colors. Her palette is limited and it works beautifully. So I have no idea what time it is as usual. Oh, it's time to say goodbye. I will see everyone next week. It will be our final August class. We don't have time, Joe, sorry. Joe is very prolific. He has a lot of artwork he wants to share. Next week, Joe, you can share more. I will see you all next Wednesday. Good luck. Have a wonderful weekend. This weekend, for those of you who are here in Hoboken, we will be having an art build at St. Matthew's Trinity Church, 57 A Street. Come and help us do posters. We're going to have a great time from 3 to 6 p.m., 57 8th Street. See you all soon. We're making posters for our climate march in New York City. Bye-bye. Great job.